Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So a few days ago, a lot of people have wanted me to talk about, about the DJ Envy and Tyrese drama. If you guys don't know, a week ago I went down on The Breakfast Club where DJ Envy, he had all this pent up, you know, beige rage towards Tyrese. Uh, he said he felt the way because when Tyrese was going through his manic episodes, he had disrespected him and his wife, but particularly his wife. And, you know, DJ Envy was talking real greasy, he said that he wanted to box Tyrese in his mouth and... You know, just talking hella tough. So let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. Go ahead and check out this clip right here. You were? How convenient How to step you? back. What you mean? I never stepped back from you. From you. It's right. You should have But I never up. talked to your wife in a disrespectful manner. And you talked to mine in a disrespectful manner. Oh. And I never told nobody that. If even I, the, even even I've when you were talk, on and, and you could say you were on those psych meds and you could say that you weren't you mean, but as a man some of the things that you said Tyrese deserved me to box your mouth whoa, and whoa, I didn't whoa, no, whoa, no, whoa, no, whoa, no 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 we were talking because this is something that I never wanted to say and since he wants to be well why envy I'm telling him why you said disrespectful shit to my wife what do you say it's neither here nor there to the point where why my wife doesn't call you back anymore. And to the point, when you started talking to psych meds, I, me and my wife had a conversation. He said, well, maybe Tyrese was on those medicines when he said. But if you ever text me and my wife, you can't text me because I block, I just unblocked you probably about a month ago when me and Charlamagne was talking. And he told me that you were on the psych meds and this is what it was. It was that's why, a month ago. Yeah, that's yeah. what made me unblock you. So that was the reason why I stopped talking to you and will not reach out to you anymore. All right. So you guys just saw that back and forth with Tyrese and DJ Envy. And so this kind of shocked a lot of people. Um, the show seemed to have ended on a good foot. I didn't watch the full episode because I don't watch The Breakfast Club. All I did was watch that viral clip. And so anyhow, um, a lot of people were dragging Tyrese and saying, you know, Tyrese needs to go take his meds. He needs to sit down somewhere and stop harassing DJ Envy and his wife. So he caught quite a bit of backlash. Might even said something in Tyrese's comment. This is what Tyrese said. The person says the growth and the restraint Tyrese showed is legendary. Box your mouth could have turned things violent. So Tyrese replied back and he says, it wasn't restraint. I laughed in the inside because we all know Envy wouldn't box a miniature Yerky in NY, LOL. So that is what Tyrese had to say about the situation. And so Tyrese then decided to start digging to see, you know, what all did he say to DJ Envy's wife? Because DJ Envy swarping down, they had blocked Tyrese up until a month ago and that he don't fool with him and that he's really disrespectful. But Tyrese bought a bunch of receipts showing that as recently as August 2022, which was just, you know, a year ago, they were all talking. They were in group chats. They were talking back and forth. And the conversations, to me, looked pretty cordial. So Tyrese went on a long rant talking about this situation. At one point in time, he even broke down crying as well. So this is kind of long, but I want you guys to get everything in full context. So I want y'all to go ahead and chat what Tyrese had to say about the entire situation here. Just simply be able to say, man, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to come home to an empty house, no wife, and your child get taken from you while you're out of town. Just have a heart, do your job, talk your shit. I get it, but never lose sight of mental health and never lose sight of what it must not not what it feels like to go home to no wife what it must feel see when you actually have empathy and you have a heart you put yourself in other people's shoes and you as a man of integrity you make the decision to not beat a man down with your words when you 
see that they're already down. You make that choice. And they've been through some shit. Some real shit. And Envy is currently going through some real shit. But I've made the choice to not beat anybody down while they're down. Didn't plan on getting emotional on live. Hmm. Y'all know I could use my words. Y'all know that I could make the choice to go. Both of them. But I'm not going to do it. The choice that I'm going to make. Is to wish them well. And their careers, their marriage, their family. Everything. I want the best for them. I really do. A few moments later. Alright y'all, so uh <clears throat> I've lost a little sleep since I've been home about a man accusing me of disrespecting his wife, as he said. Charlemagne in the background said, what did he say? I was wondering too, what did I say? So of course, you know, the beautiful thing about the iMessage, uh, the iCloud, uh, it gives you an opportunity to recall text messages and I don't see nothing in the text messages directly into envy or directly into his wife where I disrespected him or her. First of all, I think of all things that hurt me, anybody who knows me knows that I know and been around some of the most beautiful people, you know, girlfriends, baby mamas, wives. I, it's not even in my character <laughs> to disrespect any man, specifically his wife. And yes, they can milk, not they, because I, I don't even know that, that his wife actually feels this way, but it's, it's okay to milk the psych man. So you said a bunch of shit that you, you reckless. You know what? I'm still on my apology tour. Y'all seeing everything I spoke about it in the, in the interview. But I literally just had to pull up some receipts and I had to go and look at my phone and say, when is the last time we were actually communicating? And does anything about our communication feels like, feel like I actually disrespected his wife or him? Because whether I was on psych meds or not, that's, you're not describing me. You're not describing me as a man. That was the most hurtful thing ever. Charlemagne said, well, what did he say? I want to box you in the mouth. He he ha ha. So, Listen, I'm not going to show y'all what we were texting about. I just want to show you the death. That says DJ Envy wife, DJ Envy mission, right? That's when I was on the mission to help in any way I could to step in and help his marriage. And then if you look here, that says August 23rd, 2022. This is a text chain with me, Envy, and his wife. Not 2017, 2018, where I supposedly disrespected his wife and I was blocked. I got receipts. 
If your wife blocked me, if you blocked me, how are we communicating about anything? August 23rd, 2022. Now, let's go a little further. Here is some communication directly with your first lady. Okay. The last thing we were texting about was we were actually trying to figure out, because I told y'all I've been very uncomfortable about talking about what God used me to do and blah, blah, blah. Like I did it as from my heart. I didn't know him. I don't have a history. He ain't my brother. We ain't family. We ain't childhood homies. So it was such a random assignment and I ended up doing it. But for him to go on the airwaves and say, I wanted to box you in the mouth because you disrespected my wife. My wife blocked you, I blocked you, and I just unblocked you a month ago. That's a fucking lie, bro. That is a lie. Look at this, man. Me and your wife were communicating August 11th, 2022. August 11, 2012. Look, I said something that was seven hours and three. She said, without fail. Like, I got receipts. I'm sending, I'm sending images of my new Rolls Royce to your wife. Like, I know y'all always got nice cars and this and that. Like, if she blocked me, if I actually disrespected her, as you allege, and you felt the way, how are we communicating August 22nd, 2023? It's bullshit, bro. Like that's, that's like, look, look what your wife just texted back and said, absolutely beautiful. Talking about me purchasing an island in Turks and Caicos. That was August 23rd, 2023. Come on, man. And the last time that all three of us was on the text chain, we were actually going back and forth trying to figure out when can we finally do an IG live with all three of us finally talking about what God put on my heart to do on behalf of the marriage. So I'm going to ask you, sir, since all of this is played out for the public. Did I disrespect your wife or did I not? Because why would your wife be communicating and responding with me with all the good energy that it's always been? And why would you be communicating with me and your wife on a text chain? And why am I texting you directly and you're responding? There is no problem. There is no disrespect. Just be a man and say, when you went through the same shit that I was going through, I just needed an out. I needed to just like, yo, I, I'm not fucking with none of that. Just say it. And then here's the last thing that nobody knows. When I had my psych med meltdown, it was around 2017 because I woke up to the news September 11th. And probably like a month later is when this goofy ass psychiatrist gave me the psych med saying it's gonna help you to calm down and stabilize your mood and it fucked me up. The psych med episode had already came and went. Me and my ex were still together over a year, year and a half after the whole thing went down. Me, you and your wife have been on calls. We've been texting, we've been communicating and we've been good. So for you to say, I stopped fucking with you because you disrespected my wife and my wife blocked you and I blocked you and we just wasn't fucking with you. And every time you, you came to Atlanta and you texted me like, yo, pull up to the crib. You know why I was inviting you to the crib? I was inviting you to the crib because you were in town DJing. I wasn't inviting you to the crib to hash out no issues about me disrespecting your wife because I never disrespected your wife. You never said I disrespected her. She never said. It's a lie. Just be a man and be honest and say you went above and beyond for me out of the goodness of your heart. 
and I didn't have it in me, nor did she, to step up and help you when you was in the middle of a crisis. Y'all could have flew to Atlanta. Your first lady could have pulled my ex-wife to the side and had five, six lunches and dinners and did whatever she had to do to try and get her to stay committed to the marriage. You could have pulled me to the side and had conversations with me. You could have did anything. And even if you had attempted to help, she would have still made her decision and said, no, I'm out. I praise God every day that something that God put on my heart to say to you and your wife actually helped y'all in any way I could. But let's not be out here lying and creating characteristics in a man that ain't there, bro. I'ma box you in the mouth over some shit. First of all, he he ha ha, nigga, for real. But second of all, you lying on me, bro. You just making shit up. I got receipts. August 23rd, text messages. I'm not gonna show y'all what we texting about. Text messages, text, responses, text. Where is the person? This is his wife. This is first lady. Where is the person? She's giving me Rashawn's new cell phone number. August the 10th, 2022. The psych med and the supposed disrespect happened in 2017. So what I want us to do is I want us to be adults and I want us to leave the conversation alone and I want you to go ahead and keep wrestling with what you're wrestling with, which is that brother went out of his way and he was there for me and I've been laughing at him on my show. I've been talking shit. I've been throwing shots. I've been looking at the rumor report. We've been donkey in it a day in it. Read my captions and all my shit. And you've been just take every time a guest come on your show, you say, hey, man, what's up with Tyrese? I'll be like, damn, Envy, why are you trying to bait niggas into talking shit about me? You did it to Ludacris. You did it to Tank. You be bringing my name up when people come on the show. And I'm like, what, what, my bro? That's why I came into the show feeling the way. Why I'm on my Instagram? I'm gonna tell you why I'm on my Instagram. Because everything about what you said was on a public platform. And I'm addressing this shit publicly to let the world know your girl, your baby mama, your wife, not envies, but anybody. You can leave me in a private room and you can secretly record the conversation. I will never disrespect another man's wife. I will never disrespect another man's woman. As a matter of fact, when women break up with dudes and they're going through what they're going through, if I actually know the nigga and this ex-wife or ex-girlfriend is all of a sudden available, I won't even fuck with that. That ain't who I am as a man. There's too many women out here to be out here messing with somebody if you know somebody that they used to. Like, come on, man. That's, you, that, that's integrity that you learn in the hood, nigga. Real hood niggas know you can get your whole motherfucking head caved in for real for fucking with another nigga's wife. We don't play those games. Too many, too many niggas have been laid out in the hood for crossing that line. You don't do that. August 2022. To make text messages directly into your wife's phone. Text chains between me. You just blocked me a, a, a month ago. That's a lie. I disrespected you and your wife. Your wife blocked me. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I deserve an apology. The way you came at my wife, I should box you in a... How did I come at your wife, bro? Just say, I never gave a fuck about helping you when you was fucked up the way you went above and beyond to help me. Own it, nigga, own it. 
When you had your meltdown and your problems and you was on the brink of your, look, a year and a half after the Psych Med episode, that's when Samantha divorced me. There was no Psych Meds in sight and me, you and your wife were all still very much so in touch on calls, communication, text chains. I ain't gotta lie and make shit up, nigga. I got receipts, bruh. You're wrestling with what you decided to not do when my world was crashing down because you know I went above and beyond to do something for you that I didn't have to do. So let's not justify it. Let's not start grabbing shit out the sky to make yourself feel good about you hitting the parachute button on me when shit hit the fan for me. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Paint your picture. Say what you say. Talk about what you talk about. Our last exchange was about us finally going on Instagram to talk about the book that y'all put me in, which I'm honored and grateful that y'all decided to tell the story. I didn't want you to. Y'all decided to do interviews and tell everybody what God used me to do to step in and help in any way I could. And you have decided to not be there for me. And you feel bad about it. You feel like shit about not helping me in any way. Yes, you do. And if you want to know why I invited you to my crib when you was in Atlanta, because I actually know you. And we, <laughs> me, you, and your wife have all still been on calls, communicating, and still cool. So that fuck shit you talking about, disrespecting my wife, and where? Where? How? When? What? And if I really did, you would have blocked me in 2017 and never unblocked me ever until it was addressed. So you decided to wait until we was on your radio show to talk about some shit that never happened. Love Transaction, my new song is available on all streaming platforms. Please go and support their book. It's on Amazon, it's available. I don't think you ever loved me, featuring Lenny Kravitz and Leandria Johnson. It's available. Clearly, Envy is not gonna play my music on his show. But I got receipts, bruh. And to describe me and put that type of energy on me, you couldn't be more wrong. You couldn't even be more wrong about some shit that I would do when I was, I know I was out of my mind, but I'm almost sure I didn't even disrespect you or your wife when I was out of my mind. Because if I did, why have we still been in touch on text chains and individually. Y'all have a blessed day. Somebody just wrote, why didn't I say this during the interview? Well, I didn't say this during the interview because I was not about to pull out my fucking phone and pull up text messages and look at the dates and the energy or, or the dates and the times that we have been communicating right there in the middle of an interview. But I've been, that's, this has been fucking with me that this man would put this type of energy on me. So I had to come home, calm down, and pull out my receipts. And I got them. And the same text message to my phone is in their phone. What I'm gonna say is simple. Don't respond, Envy. Don't say nothing. Don't jump out there. Just leave it alone, bro. You got way other, bigger things that you fighting through right now. You don't want this smoke. I promise you don't want this smoke because I got receipts and I'm not making nothing up. Just say when you had an opportunity to step in and help me when I was depressed and sad and confused and about to lose my wife and my family, you didn't do anything and you didn't help and you didn't feel the need to help. Y'all could have flew in town. Y'all could have called us. 
Y'all could have did anything. You just didn't do it. That's it. That's the bottom line. And a whole lot of people didn't help either. That I've been there for as well. And I got to just go to God on this, man. And I got to just let it go. And I'm only on this IG live because you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't put, no, I would, I would never, ever disrespect and cross the line, flirt with sh those shots. I don't play those games, my nigga, at all. And if I actually disrespected your wife, why are we still texting? With text chains between me, you, and her, why have I been texting you direct? Why have I been texting her direct? Because it's all good. So I thought, until you dropped the bombshell on the breakfast club. Charlemagne said, damn, nigga, what did he say? What did he do? I'm asking the same question. Obviously, it was nothing. Because if it was, where are the receipts? Envy, I forgive you. First lady, I forgive you. And if I actually said anything, whether I was on psych meds or not, that was actually disrespectful. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what I did. Allegedly. If I did say something, if I did disrespect you, Envy, or your wife in any capacity, I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. Do I believe? Do I believe I disrespected y'all? I don't believe it for one second. Because if I was actually blocked, why have we been texting this whole time? You didn't unblock me a month ago. You just wanted to go viral. <laughs> My nigga, stay blessed. Click the link in my Instagram bio. Love Transaction is my new single that just got released. I Don't Think You Ever Love Me is my song that just got released about the divorce and everything that I've been dealing with. And I would love for y'all to hear it. Envy's not gonna support Love Transaction. It's fine. For everybody else, over 50 radio stations that's already playing my song and we haven't even officially went to radio. For everybody in radio that's already been supporting my song and my single and we haven't even officially went to radio, I just want to say thank you. That means the world to me. I never thought I would ever sing these songs or release songs with this type of context. And, 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 and lyrics, but it's out there. So let's take all this energy and let's get back into our positivity. Usa vibes, energy. But the only way I can rest at night is if I clear my name. And y'all can have whatever opinions y'all want, but I'm not finna go to sleep at night and have a man to attack my character. And if I actually did what you said I did, why have we all still been in touch? That's all. Have a great day, boys and girls. All right. So y'all just watched what Tyrese had to say. And like I said, it was, you know, it's kind of sad that he kind of got emotional near the end um, concerning everything. And so a lot of people then once again started dragging DJ Envy and saying that he's messy and he's pushing, you know, Tyrese to his wit's end and how dare he lie on Tyrese and Tyrese had receipts. So, of course, DJ Envy could not wait to get onto the breakfast show today. DJ Envy, a.k.a. DJ Envious in my Rick Ross voice. DJ Envious. Envious. Decided to address the situation because Tyrese bought receipts. And people were going in on DJ Envy on Twitter. 
And so DJ Envy basically said that, you know, he didn't want it to go this far. But since Tyrese is trying to, you know, bring receipts and shift the conversation, he's going to take it there. He also attempted to bring his wife, Gia, into the conversation as well. So this entire situation is insane. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the Breakfast Club conversation that went down today. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Breakfast Club, and he said that he was upset that we didn't check on him when he was going through his problems because when I was going through my problems with my wife, uh, you know, when we were at our lowest, he was there to help. And I told him during that conversation, you know, I didn't because you said some things to my wife and myself that I thought was disrespectful. He said we didn't check up on him. We checked up on him numerous times. I guess uh, after the interview, everything was good. He apologized. We left on a positive note. But I guess when he got back home, Maybe he read the comments, maybe social media, whatever it was. Uh, he got into a fit and, and one one post he started crying and said, we don't respect his mental. And then yesterday he did a whole long video and he called me a liar. But for him to go on the airwaves and say, I wanted to box you in the mouth because That's you not what disrespected my wife. My wife blocked you. I blocked you. And I just unblocked you a month ago. That's a f lie, bro. Me and your wife were communicating August 11th, 2022. I got receipts. Did I disrespect your wife or did I not? I'm yes. so sick of people putting that in in what you said. Because you didn't say you didn't say box them in your mouth. You said, I want to box your mouth. Right. I want to box your mouth. So <laughs> so to answer Tyrese, yes, he was blocked. Uh, and the reason I know he was blocked is because he Did had Charlemagne and myself <laughs> on a group text and I never replied because I didn't see it. He did speak to my wife and he wanted me and my wife to go on live and he wanted to ish on his ex Samantha. He wanted to ish on it on, on his wife. Uh, and I actually texted him and I said, good morning. No, I'm passing on this. I prayed on it. Wasn't in the card. Stay blessed. Have an amazing day. Right. Because I didn't want to be a part of him ishing on his wife. Right. So then he said I was lying and he never said anything disrespectful to my wife. Well, what he actually did was when they were talking, he was one of those dudes. And we all know that guy that tries to plant those seeds. If you had a man like me, it wouldn't have went down like that. I would have never. And I never said anything. Mm. And I'm going to tell you why I never said anything. Mm. I never said anything because, yes, Tyrese was there and he did help save my marriage. And I was like, I just don't want to ish on that. So I just kept it quiet and I just stepped away from him. Because it's difficult because you have somebody that helped, but then you also have somebody that's trying to hurt. Mm -hmm. But me and my wife accepted the help side and he opened us up to a place where, you know, we were able to fix our relationship and fix our marriage. And our marriage is even stronger now. Then I got a text, July 8th, 2022. You, you got the text? I just sent you the text, right? That's somebody that works for Tyrese. You see that text? I'm looking at the text. Now, I never mentioned anything to anybody that he flirted with my wife. Mm -hmm. What does that text say? Mm -hmm. I'm not reading this. It says, yo, DJ Envy Blessings. Stay away from Tyrese, bro. He tried to destroy my marriage and career. He will do the same to y'all. Please, I'm open to talk to you. I'm not trying to gain anything from this. I'm just sick of the devil and I refuse to know what I know and not tell good people what's up with that cat. Please stay away. He will try and get your wife. What's the date of that? Uh, July 8th, 2022. July 8th, 2022. So it, it actually says, please stay away. He will try to get you and your wife. Right. Shut up. Um, <laughs> but that just shows that's him as a person. Mm -hmm. Then the guy, he posts his picture and tells, tells you his name, tells you who his wife is, tells you the people he knows. He says, I want you to be real because that's what Tyrese did. He did, he did it to me, flirted with my wife, and he's, and he's doing it with you. He had no idea because I don't even know this gentleman. Mm. I don't know why y'all didn't have that conversation when y'all was when he was just up here. Because I didn't want to disrespect him. I was like, I'm just gonna tell him what it is and leave it at that. He apologized and I, he said it was the psych meds. Remember, um, it's the psych meds. Oh my gosh, I, I would never. Uh, da, da. Bull ish. Y'all lied to me. We sat here and had a whole hour and thirty minute conversation, <laughs> and now you saying all of this stuff after the fact. Tyree saying all of this stuff after the fact. And you know what? You're absolutely right. Let's call my wife, please. Oh God. Uh oh. Jesus Christ. Am I on the radio? Yes, you are. You are on the radio. <laughs> uh, Tyrese uh, is calling me a liar. Uh, for people that don't know, uh, I stopped talking to Tyrese. And there was a reason why I stopped talking to Tyrese. Not because only that I think he was a bozo and full of ish, but also because of the way that I felt he was talking and conducting business with my wife. 
Uh, so I'm going to step back and I want Charlemagne to ask the questions because I don't want you to. I, don't ask I, want, me, no, I want you to Charlemagne ask. Charlemagne is not getting involved. I in want this you to ask. In no way, shape, or form. This is. Good morning, Gia, by the way. Okay? Good morning. This is a conversation between a husband and a wife and why the husband. Uh, stop talking to somebody and why the wife stopped talking to somebody so the husband and wife should have a conversation I'm sitting back watching the Casey crew live go good question so uh, <laughs> babe just for people that don't know uh, Tyrese helped save our relationship when we were going through probably our lowest point and I cheated uh, Tyrese came in and really helped us and guided us through our relationship correct yes he did absolutely and, and then we got to a point where we stopped talking to Tyrese I even blocked Tyrese uh and I wanted to box his mouth, uh, as I said the other day. And can you explain to the people why we stopped talking to Tyrese? Well, we stopped talking to Tyrese on two different occasions. Um, once many, many years ago, when he did do that, ama that amazing thing for us, um, he and I became friends and we were very, very cool and we spoke often. And a lot of times you'd be laying in the bed next to me while I was talking to him and at first, everything was cool, but for me, it got to a point where it became inappropriate and uncomfortable, where I felt as though lines were being crossed, and you felt as though lines were being crossed, and we both decided that we were going to take a step back, and you know, there was times where I felt like he was extremely demanding of my time and of my attention, where if I didn't give him my time and my attention, he would get very angry, get very upset, and let me know what his expectations were of me. And, you know, at that time, I don't I, I, I didn't feel as though he was going through any mental issues. I didn't feel as though he was facing any mental challenges at that time. I know that he does go through things and I know that he has been on medication, but at that time I felt as though he was very clear-minded and everything seemed cool. But when I started to feel uncomfortable and you started to feel uncomfortable, we took a step back. But what lines were crossed? Then, people would be like, well, what lines did he cross? You know, I don't really feel comfortable being specific mm -hmm. um, because at the same time, I still do have a respect for him. I know that you still do have a respect for him. Um, I would feel more comfortable just being general and saying that, you know, there was flirting and inappropriate compliments for a woman who's married. Okay. I respect Is that. Is that fair to say? Yeah, Is that I, fair to say? I don't have respect for him though, but yeah, no, I get it, and you do it, and you know, I, I appreciate that. What he so did. How did you see no, it? No, I know, no, I, huh? I know, I know that you're. I know that everything that's going on right now, um, and I know that he's being boisterous about it. I haven't been on Instagram in the last two weeks because we've been really busy, but you know, you've told me some things, but I haven't really seen it firsthand, so it's not going to affect me um, the same way it's affecting you because I haven't seen it. But what I can say is that. <laughs> very clear lines were crossed and now, now I get it I, so how did you see it Envy? Um, there's certain things that you don't say to a man's wife there's certain things that you don't say to a man's girlfriend there's certain things that you don't say in a flirtatious way and I told you what he said uh, you you spoke to my wife yesterday, so you know what he said. So that's why you wanted to box. That's why you said I box your mouth. Yeah, that's why I wanted to box his mouth. It's just certain things you don't play with somebody's wife like that. And Were you upset that he wasn't flirting with you in any way, shape, or form? A little bit. No, you see, you playing too much. <laughs> but no, uh, when it comes to it, I look at it like this: uh, Tyrese did help save my marriage, and I have a respect for him for that. Uh, that's the reason why, instead of going at him, I just let it go. I just just not so spoke to him anymore until he starts going up now i don't know if he has a record to sell he's trying to uh, push his record or whatever it may be i just don't like it and the reason i don't like it is that man was up here he was in our faces we had a conversation after the conversation we let things go and it's just always weird when people do that they go home and now all of a sudden they 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 do other things we just had a conversation he was just here for an hour and 30 minutes I, yeah that was strange you know but uh i just and I'm sorry to wake. I know you got to get the kids to school. I know uh, two got to go to school right now. So I, I appreciate it. But um, I just don't like to be called a liar. And when somebody says, I got receipts, I got receipts. When I'm like, no, you spoke to my wife. Like my what like, receipts? What do you mean he said he has receipts? Uh, because, I, you know, who knows? I, I wouldn't want to. I would listen. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to be put in a position to divulge the things that were said. 
But if he's calling you a liar, it didn't have to go that far. If he's calling you a liar, then that's a step that might have to be taken. Because by no stretch of the imagination are you a liar. By no stretch of the imagination are you exaggerating anything. Okay. It's It was very clear. It was very inappropriate. And your reaction was very appropriate. Well, babe, um, I love you. And I know you got to get these kids to school. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, sweetie, bye. Peace, and, yeah. All right, bye, Charlotte. And I also want to say, you know, when he said I didn't check on him, how many messages did I send you yesterday where I showed you that I checked on him numerous times? I'm sick of y'all. And I'm, I think, I'm just asking. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sick of I'm you. I'm just asking. Tyrese. I'm just. And, and I think I think that I think y'all are lovers. You think so? I do. <laughs> this is this is what I think this is all about. I think his. He's next not my album, type. I think his next <laughs> album is about both his exes. <laughs> okay, you and his ex-wife. <laughs> He's not my type. I think beautiful pain has something to do with you too. He's not my type. All right, because both of y'all seem like y'all in pain. About Amy, this what's situation. your type? Um. Definitely his type. He's tall, dark, and a liar. He likes short, dark, okay. and bald head. I, 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 he's tall, dark, and a liar. And, and liar. Like, and a bozo. I don't like. I don't do bozos, tall and dark. I like short. Okay. Dark, bald, honest. Truth teller. Truth teller. Okay. I'm sick of both of y'all, man. So now I got. That's what I like. That's what you like. So now I got to deal with a whole nother week of Tyrese. <laughs> now we're gonna get more Tyrese Instagram I'm, videos and everything else because of envy. But listen, here's the thing. You know what? I don't care. I do care, but I don't care enough to have this conversation. <laughs> like it is what it is. Nobody cares about the truth and the lies more entertaining. So you know, y'all believe who y'all want to believe. No, that's, that, I, that's I, the I, truth. I get it. I that's listen. You ain't got to tell me. You know, but it don't matter. And I tell you this all the time. What? When people don't like you, they gonna ride with anything that's against you. So the people who don't like. Tyrese gonna ride with you the people who don't like you gonna ride with Tyrese so it don't even really matter at the end of the day you right all right so you guys just heard what Gia and DJ Envy had to say about the situation so this entire drama this whole saga is very very interesting to me now I will say this I think that Tyrese as much as I do love clowning him I'm pulling my little violin out on him I think Tyrese was being very sincere with his feelings and about everything, and I know for years they've talked about how Tyrese, you know, really how Tyrese really helped to mend their marriage and keep them together. And I think it might be a situation where DJ Envy knows what Tyrese did for him, and because he wasn't able to do the same, it was easier to clown Tyrese, you know, on the Breakfast Club and things like that, as opposed to like being a genuine friend to him. Now, there's a few things that I do find weird on both sides, you know. Yes, Tyrese may have played a hand in helping their marriage, but to act like, you know, Tyrese is the Lord and Savior of marriages, meanwhile, he couldn't keep his own together is very interesting. I also find it weird um, how Gia gets very upset at even the insinuation that DJ Envy could be called a liar. Well, ma'am, they've been calling your man a liar. When he was cheating on you with Erica Mena, I'm sure he was lying. I'm sure he wasn't honest about that. On top of that, um, you know, they're also saying that he's out here scamming folks and the whole flipping NJ. Supposedly there's people, you know, suing him. So in that case, he also lied about investments and also lied about things that weren't popping. So I find it very interesting that she's so upset that he could be called a liar when there's all these things out here basically showing that he has lied about shit, you know. Now, I will say this. I think that she handled everything overall, you know, cute. You know, she kept it cute, um, not too, too petty. But I do find it weird that a grown married woman is up, you know, texting or being on the phone with Tyrese, while, regardless if her husband is there or not. I, I just find this weird. I get it. They're friends. But I feel like maybe they allow Tyrese too much space into their relationship. And how do we know that Gia wasn't enjoying the flirting? How do we know that Gio also wasn't reciprocating or possibly left some type of window or door open where Tyrese thought it was okay to even flirt with her? I just feel like there's more to the story. I'm not going to say that I automatically believe everything DJ Envy and Gio are saying or that I automatically believe everything that Tyrese is saying. You know, like they always say there are three sides to the story, his, hers, and the truth. And I believe that the truth lies somewhere in the middle I think DJ Envy is once again trying to flex his muscles and act tough on the Breakfast Club. 
and he knew that Tyrese was a perfect target. Um, yes, could Tyrese have been messy and, you know, trying to put out feelers to see if DJ Envy's wife was, you know, willing to go along with it? Yeah, people do it all the time. But we don't know if she was also putting out feelers, if she was also liking the fact that Tyrese was low-key flirting with her. You know, we don't know. And the fact that they're on the phone constantly talking to each other, texting back and forth, regardless if Envy is there or not, I find that awkward. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think there should be boundaries set, especially when you're in a relationship and you're married. And another thing I will say that I do respect Tyrese for being vulnerable and emotional. We know he gets emotional a lot. But I think he was really speaking from his heart. I think he really genuinely feels like, you know, he didn't do anything wrong and that he's hurt the way DJ Envy came at him. You know, I think there needs to be a level of professionalism. This entire conversation wasn't needed for The Breakfast Club. It wasn't the world's business. You know, if DJ Envy really felt the way, he really could have pulled Tyrese's coattail and talked to him once the cameras were off, man to man. So I feel like DJ Envy is definitely being messy. They're trying to get ratings. They're trying to get views for The Breakfast Club because their ratings are not what they used to be. And I think that he manufactured a lot of this drama to try and, you know, take eyes away from the lawsuits and the drama going on with him and Tony the Closer and all this stuff that's going on with him with flipping NJ. And I think that he did that using Tyrese because it's like he has all this smoke for this, you know, irrelevant situation, but refuses to address any of the people who lost their money in this whole flipping NJ, you know, scam, you know, allegedly. So I just find that very, very interesting. I think the only person in this whole situation who's pretty smart is Charlemagne the God. I am over Charlemagne's jokes and all his little innuendos. Um, they're kind of over the top. But I will say this. One thing about See the God is that he is pretty smart when it comes to his personal life. We know he has a wife. We know she's a black woman. We know he has two daughters. And that's literally the extent of it. I think we've only seen his wife one time <laughs> in a public picture. I don't think I've ever seen what Charlemagne's daughters look like. And he's done that for a reason. He's kept his business and his family affairs totally separate from the Breakfast Club, totally separate from his day job. And I respect him for doing that. Unlike DJ Envy, who has put all his business out there with his wife, you know, their sex issues, the cheating, you know, and now there's just more more drama being attached to them in their marriage. So I think I do respect Charlemagne and all this that he's just kind of sat back and shut it up and just done and just basically did his job as opposed to using his personal life as food for fodder for the Breakfast Club. So with that being said, I leave the question up to you guys. How do y'all feel about this situation? Are you guys team Tyrese on this? Do you feel like Tyrese is the one being honest? Or are you guys team DJ MV and Gia? Do you feel like they're the ones being the most honest about the situation? Or do you feel like all these people are batshit crazy and you have no dog in this fight? <laughs> okay, I think that's where I stand. I'm in the middle. I have no dog in this fight. I have no real dog in this fight. I just think the whole situation is messy and it wasn't needed. You know, DJ Envy started it. Tyrese pulled his receipts. Now he's pulling his wife to come and, you know, have his back in this battle that she clearly doesn't want to be a part of. So I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share it. And most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.